and artificial intelligence come together. On today's show, we're going to be covering a very fascinating topic. And welcome to Wednesdays with Willa. I am your host, Willa White, and this is my weekly podcast show that airs on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern on my Facebook page, Willa White Medium. Also goes out on the Lilydale Assembly Facebook page. It's uploaded to the YouTube channels as well. So you can tune in in different formats. And if you need to catch the replay, just know that they go into the archive videos of of uh, on my Facebook page, Willow White Medium, uh, and also my YouTube channel. So you can even type in the name of your favorite guest, uh, the, <laughs> the name, some topics, and uh, a lot of things will pop up because this is year seven of Wednesdays with Willow. So I've got lots of great shows from the past for you to binge watch to your heart's content. I have a lot of people that tell me that this has really helped them and educated them, and I'm so thrilled to continue this. So please like and and share and follow and subscribe so we can keep the shows going. And I am so thrilled to welcome back on the show today, Joseph Scheel. Hi, Joe. How are you doing, Willa? Thank you. <laughs> we're, we're glad to have you back. Um, you. you know, we, we had uh, one last month in March, Conversational Mediumship, which was a, a wonderful episode. People can look back at that one as well as the other ones. And we've even had Joe come on the show and describe about his spirit art because he is a medium and spirit artist, as well as being the pastor at the Journey Within Church in New Jersey. And today our topic is the future of mediumship advancements in science and artificial intelligence. And I know a lot of people are very interested in this topic, myself included, and you've had some personal experiences that you wanted to share with folks today. Sure. So let's get us started. I mean, artificial intel intelligence, when we, you know, when we think about those things, uh, it's just going to be amazing. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm excited about it myself. I don't know about other people, but uh, I, I, uh, I know there's lots of fears that come around with AI and fear of, you know, our being exposed in some way or having our privacy uh, destroyed or, um, you know, maybe uh, all the way up to having, uh, you know, machines take over or something, you know, because they're, because of the intelligence involved. Um, yeah. It's gone yeah. beyond just playing chess or, mm -hmm. you know, something simple like that. Now, mm -hmm. you know, getting self-driving cars and, you know, right. it just feels right. like I mean, we're just, the Jetsons I, now. <laughs> I just got a new vehicle that drives all by itself a long ways and it's amazing, but, um, and, and it's, it's incredible. But the fact of the matter is, is that, those are just uh, calculations of things, uh, how how things go, and uh, sensors, if you will, and those types of things. But we have we have more to look forward to in the world of AI. But we also have more to look forward to for the sake of uh, mediumship, which is really incredible, and I think it's going to really um, help. Uh, separate the the real from the from the, from the fraud if you will um in a lot of ways we're going to have a lot of things that can help us to move forward and see further and get more detail and more evidence of the spirit world and as we continue to work on that as we continue to try to find our way forward to have more evidence and more scientific understanding of of an afterlife then we begin to we begin to really get an understanding that uh, the continuity of life is really there you know i've mentioned before probably on the show that you know back back quite a ways ago in in the early 1900s um you know the president of harvard said that this this he described spiritualism and said it's the, the religion of the future mm -hmm. and People kind of poo-pooed that, I'm sure. They probably wanted to shut it down or, or taint it. And, uh, you know, for, for years, I think uh, even spiritualists themselves have been afraid to admit their exploration, their, their look forward, their wanting to know. And um, I think that what is happening with um, AI is we're becoming closer to an understanding of where intelligence sits and how it can work for the greater good of everybody, for the greater good of the world, for the peace of the world, 
not necessarily as weaponry or to hurt each other. And in the climate that we're in right now, um, which has probably been the climate of the world since the beginning, which is, you know, human beings in humanity to human beings, uh, this is more about coming together, more about understanding each other, and more about knowing that there's not just this world, but there's worlds to come and that there's another world. In other words, our loved ones are not far away. They're only a thought away. So in my experience, some of the things that have happened that are kind of interesting were are things that are being used for all kinds of situations. And as a spirit artist, I've been involved in being tested to say, how do I get that information? You know, and I have a spirit art program going right now for a number of spirit artists that, that are learning. And I'm trying to explain to them that that our thinking and how we receive spirit in our minds may be unseen right now, but it's becoming more and more evident of how the how the mind works. And when we understand how the mind works, I'm not just saying this brain of ours, this little computer chip that we've got, but this but the greater mind, the the unseen world, if you will, and how we receive it and understand it and calculate it uh, through all of our senses and bring it to some common sense or some sense of, the, of uh, understanding, if you will. So what I've been tested for before is, you know, how do I get an image? How does that image come together? What creates an image? And it turns out in this wonderful universe of ours, there is, a, there is an intelligence. I understand that there's people out there that are atheists that are not necessarily against God. They just say there's not enough evidence to believe it for, them, for themselves. I have no animosity against them. They can yeah. justify anything. But mm -hmm. I do have a belief that there's a greater um, working going on. And if you look at everything and how it works together, uh, even in its uh, positive and negative effects, it all comes to uh, a real loving, caring way of bringing us forward and evolving the spirit, evolving our own spirit. And since we're, as spiritualists, we are personally responsible for our own spirit and we take that responsibility, we start to look at ways in which we can enhance our intelligence or enhance our way of understanding. AI offers us a tremendous opportunity, not just is it scary? I, I get it. You know, I get that, you know, oh, I don't know. Everybody will know my business or whatever. Um, it may be scary that way, but even in the testing that I've been through, the they may know a lot about me, but in service of others, we stop worrying about what you know what's people going to think of me what are they what are they going to find out about me what's my dirt you know uh it's it's got to be I, I i have to be an open book and say okay there's something new here there's something evolving here there's something i know that others can know better if i just get out of the way and let them test what i'm doing and that's how you decided to be able to take part in something like right, that. Right, right. I, I, it's not like a, a bad article in, yeah. you know, in the New York Times or, uh, you know, the, the, the Herald or something. It's not, it's not like some of the articles that I've seen written before and even, even things about me, for God's sakes, that have been written. Um, so I have a question then, you know, right. because uh, a few decades ago, I watched a, a documentary that explained about vision. Right. And, uh, you know, they, they hooked people up to the little bloop, bloop, right. <laughs> suction cuppy things right. and they would show them an image and they uh, on the television screen. And then there would be a corresponding image in the individual's brain that would be picked right. up that would be the picture of the item. Right. So the, uh, the, the places of the brain that would light up just by looking at the image mm -hmm. were the same places in the brain if they were experiencing it themselves. So let's say it mm -hmm. wasn't a static picture or a video. And so the, it was just really fascinating that whatever you watch, whatever you visually are taking on board, those the same places are activated. So mm -hmm. I, I guess when I'm picturing you, um, were you uh, 
Did they put the suction cuppy things on you? What did they do? Well, a lot of it, a lot of it happens like just on the computer, like this, like a, a video call. Um, oh, so is it like a Zoom and, video and then call? Readings, mm -hmm. And then readings, you know, open readings or readings that they call double blind readings. Okay. So in other words, a double blind reading is I read for somebody who knows somebody else who mm -hmm. lost somebody. Okay. So I'm not reading for the person I'm looking at. I'm reading for someone they know that right. knew somebody else that lost somebody. Got so it. it's, it's quite a ways away from the actual spirit. But what we're trying to do is not necessarily telepathy. What we're trying to do is get uh, information from the spirit world and from directly from them. So it's through this me mesh of confusion uh, that we've created in the experiment mm -hmm. to see who do I draw? How do I get that imagery? Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're well, saying that you didn't have to go on site somewhere. You were just in the comfort of your own space. Exactly. And then they, how would they get the, what was registering? The, the, uh, the, what they do is they ask enough questions and they, 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 the, the screen will pop. It'll do different things. And, and um, it's light sensor. So you, they're getting your eyes. Oh, they're watching what your eye movement is. And what your eye movements and other things. Okay. OK, I'm not the scientist. Right. So if I could, you know, if I could explain to you what the various uh, the various experiments that have been done, um, I, I, I'd i love to. But I I'm not a scientist. I'm not the doctor. I, I don't have the Ph.D. in that. But they they certainly have a way of testing those things. Just like you said, the experience right. is what's the reaction. Right. Where it's coming from. Okay. So if you were to go to a mo the movies with your friends and you go to a scary movie, you know, right. and all of a sudden the, the chainsaw massacre comes out of the back room or something and you jump, you know, that's your reaction. You're right. getting a real time reaction to something that's phony, something that's not even real. Okay. An image only is making all your senses either frightened or you're feeling like you can go to some some of these movies that are 3d movies and feel like you're getting wet feel like it's snow or or you're going, taking you through the rapids things <laughs> like avatar where you feel like the the spirits are coming though the, the the little fairies are coming down on top of you in the middle of the theater theater now 3d uh experience if you will is an a is a new ai if you will you know like how how do we how do we feel this how do we make this go over an entire theater well, when I watched that documentary, it made me very aware of what I take in visually. Right. You know, whether it be the news, you know, I certainly have to avoid horror movies and those kinds of things because right. I don't need that reverberating in me later on. Well, this is this is a lot of debate, you know, today about about you know Facebook or TikTok or a lot of the uh, social media that that people are seeing images, children are seeing images that they shouldn't see or you know, and then there's all these, uh, you know, moral decisions to make, uh, ethical decisions for society, those types of things. So this, though, all those arguments are up and going. All those quandaries and and infighting over those types of things. How yeah. how often has uh, things, you know, the, the, the things like even the even the shootings of today. How are they? How is Hollywood blamed for that? You know, because oh. of all the all the, the stimulus that's put into the so world. they're recording your stimulus, uh, what's stimulating you while you're in spirit contact, doing a reading, following your eyes. Exactly. And you and asking me specific questions, asking me, oh. you know, asking me a series of specific questions. Like, what kind of questions? How do you, you? Well, how do you how do you see them? When does it happen? Mm -hmm. What's going on at the time? Do you ever see them moving? You know, so they they're talking about not only spirit communication but they're talking about the aspects of spirit communication does that set off this sense do you when you see something do you smell it or taste it you know these are things that people do i mean we don't need the major experiment to see that we could see an apple and say do you taste it and a medium's going to say yeah i can taste it because i'm looking at it i can I, and so what are we talking about there we're talking about information that's already known sure so in other words the spirit communication is coming down to the fact that we already know a whole lot and so when we're 
tantalized or, or um, kind of pushed or sensitized to the spirit world coming to us as mm -hmm. mediums, we then already know the information and it's put together to create in ourselves an understanding of who that person is. True. So we you start to bring the essence of that spirit. Right. And the more we do this work over many, many years, you know, it used to be like, oh, I got this. Oh, that's cool. You know, like, oh, mom, mom owned a horse. Got it. You know, it's like, wow. You know, but what does the horse look like? What's the horse's name? Well, how often did she have it? What were the years that she had it? What month did it die? You know, what? And then we're becoming much more. Uh, I would say serious about the evidence to make sure that's what we have. We just didn't have some lady in the 1800s that owned a horse because a lot of people owned horses, you see? So instead of being general information or hearsay for somebody who's in grief and begging to hear from somebody, so they're, they're susceptible to being conned, if you will, the susceptible to information, even if they're not being conned, they're so desperate for the information and the healing that they'll take on anything our job as mediums as i see it is to get the evidence that is irrefutable and specific to that person and that that person on the other side but when you're in that experiment they're asking you questions and interrupting you during the reading no it's two different series oh it's two you different do a series. reading you do a reading do a drawing they are watching that then they're asking questions how did you get this how do you get that Okay. And then you're having different types of people that you're experimenting with. Okay. okay? And then they, there's people that have uh, even come to talk with me and say, okay, what do you see here? What do you see there? So they're testing the remote viewing as well. Mm. So okay. where can you see and how far can you see and what accurate, what is, what's the accuracy of that? Okay. Now, do, they, now, do they ever hook you up? or scan you with an MRI, none of that, or it's just based no, on- No, I've had MRIs, but that's not, that's not this particular, this particular situation. Mm -hmm. What they, what they've been working on for several years, which has worked for certain parts of, uh, which they put to use, which is uh, facial recognition. Okay. Okay. Facial recognition is become a very, very serious thing that is becoming more and more accurate. Now that's AI. The, in that's other true. words, the AI is figuring out what the face looks like because of certain data fed in or certain words that are said. They're tall, they're thin, they've got blue eyes, they've got, you know, they got, they've got a kind of a, a thinner face. They, they have a mustache, it's kind of thin. So as a medium, if I'm giving that kind of information the AI starts to put together the image. In other words, what, I, what I'm doing in the experience that I ha I've had is basically putting myself out of business as a spirit artist, <laughs> but also um, very happily and very uh, excitedly giving an opportunity to authentic mediums to not only do a reading and have it all documented you know, like we have we have word processors on our computers now where it's all processed out and spelled out every word that's said. So we don't miss it. We don't have to take notes, things like this. But the drawing is drawn by the computer. Right. So the image that you're talking about, the spirit you're talking about, the more accurate you are, the, the closer that image is going to come. And AI is going to figure out exactly how, what that person looked like. And just based on verbal, your view, your based, verbal on verbal, views you're giving. based on verbal feeds, but not it's, actually from the medium's brain, then per se, like it, no, it's there's not, nothing that's coming directly just, from that. Verbal is one thing, mm -hmm. but I'm sure that the, you know, I don't know this for sure, but I can only imagine, okay, that in time, all of our senses will be uh, readable by the AI. Mm. our emotions, how we're sensing that person, what we're looking at in our brain. So we're seeing it and they're seeing what we see based on all these other signals that AI is picking up on because it's working thousands of times faster than our own brain. So it's catching up and going well beyond what we can do and giving us an image of the person on the other side. So we've never met before. As, as we're 
talking, you know, I'm I, just um, a few months back, I went to a virtual reality thing where you put the goggles on right, right. and it was, um, you know, there was a military experience and, you know, halo jump parachute out kind of thing. It's supposed to be real. And so as you're talking, I'm thinking of, you know, the medium and the, the sitter having these on somehow. And then all of a sudden it becomes this virtual reality world and the sitter is seeing and experiencing uh, in deeper level what the medium is is have, having in the conversation with that spirit. It's is that kind of what you're talking about? That's kind of what I'm talking about. That wow. that in the future, I mean, if you, um, you know, many many years ago when I was high school in, in high school, we had to read the book Fahrenheit 451. You know, uh, which is the which is the burning level of paper where they're burning the books. So everybody's trying to remember books and and memorize them and things like that. Sure. You know, there was a there was a a movie out not too long, well, probably several years ago, uh, called Eli, which, where he, he memorizes the Bible and he goes Ooh. across. He's the only one that has the Bible in his head, word for word. Right. So he's memorizing it. So it, it then can be put to this new society because we've killed each other. We've, we've ruined the world, you know. So he's the only one that has a book level ready because the books were all burned. They were all destroyed. So knowledge or, um, you know, we, we often talk about the dumbing down of America, you know, the dumbing down of people like that educations, you know, 27th in math and things like this. We were never that way before. And, and it doesn't matter one country or another country. The whole world has to live in, in a more intelligent way. And AI is going to help do that. Mm -hmm. It's not going to destroy us. It's going to enhance us and challenge us to use more of our brain, to use more of what we have. Because we have it. We have the capacity. We just don't use it. Mm -hmm. And so when we begin to do AI work as mediums, what happens is I believe the future, long after I'm gone, is not only having the experience of seeing the drawing and having your reading typed out for you, which is basically coming soon, okay, very soon, um, but at some point in time, that may even be a holographic image right. of the person standing in the room. So I guess I, I, have, I don't have an AI concern that I, I don't want to address that. I want to say by having hologram experience in the room, that is very different from having a true spirit communication. You know, you're having it's only happening because it's only able to happen. Yeah. It will only be enabled to happen because of the spiritual connection, because of the medium and the spirit. When that comes together and that's, um, kind of triggered or or kind of tapped into, if you will, then all those other things like the words that are being recorded, the image that's being created, or any kind of holographic experience or presence in the room becomes real. It becomes reality because the medium is doing their job correctly. Mm -hmm. But the medium no longer has to pick up a pencil and draw. Right. So that's where I'm. It's all painting and around you in the in. Yeah, I mean in the computer. Like some of those books of the past, you know, some of the futuristic books talked about, you know, television rooms where all four walls, and you be, you can you can take part in the play. You can walk in and take a position in the television show. Mm -hmm. You can say, well, I want to be, you know, I want to be in uh, in that person in in. Uh, Gilligan's Island, or I want to be that, you know, I want to be Gilligan today. So you, you step in and you're Gilligan and you know the lines and you say the lines. Do you well, think that some people who are grieving, let's say it went to this virtual reality hologram effect that we've just been talking about. Do you think that, that uh, the client, the sitter may try to keep playing and playing that experience just to have a little bit of their person instead of moving forward? I guess I, I worry about I know people sometimes they'll tell me they'll listen to recording over and over and over again of the reading. I guess I, I have concerns that they would just be in this. I, this I, would, I would definitely understand the concerns all yeah. the way down the line. I mean, look at look at some of the robotics that are being done right now with AI. Okay, you could have a robot a robot 
be fashioned and made to look exactly like mom even right now i mean oh, wow. that's not that far in the future where you could it, it, it's that's just uh you know that's just making making something you know uh to look like somebody now to have it think like somebody talk like somebody have the same voice same notions is it enough is it enough the fact of the matter is is that to my thinking it's beyond even my um, imagination that someday we can have something that has the spirit of that person it certainly can have the attitude it's they're certainly going to be able to give it uh the demeanor if you will they're certainly going to be able to do these things now could that become a dependency of the future yeah. i don't um, think that's healthy yeah, it could become a habit it's or, extremely yeah. unhealthy to, to think that someone it could it could also be quite healing and it, it could also be <laughs> it depends uh, but... it depends you yeah. know but it, but and certainly there's going to be a tremendous amount of medical ethics involved okay and more regulation more things as yeah. human beings go forward but as far as our work goes to keep it simple uh what i'm trying to let young students know is if you get involved in this if you allow yourself to be tested if you allow yourself to do this then this is also going to kind of take the phonies out of the picture because they're not going to be able to to have that connection that works so therefore what they're imaging or what they're doing is going to be calculated and caught right okay and therefore if it doesn't make sense or it doesn't add up then it's thrown out right and therefore the image isn't going to come or the evidence isn't going to be there mm -hmm. because the connection is is being seen the the connection between the spirit world and our spiritual mind so when we're blending with spirit as mediums that blend is what's creating all these other things that the ai is picking up on and AI is going to kind of wrap around that and if anything's faulty with it you know say we're wrong about something that's there's there's only an element of acceptability of falsehoods or false information where everything else is tying together quite well what are we what are we what is ai determining they're determining not only what the medium is saying not only what's being coming from the spirit world and its connection with the medium but also the reaction of the sitter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that circle of communication we've talked about in the past with a conversation is taking place and therefore verification is constant so where we might say something and not even pay attention to the client because we're getting the information and we're just kind of spewing it out the client is then responding with an emotion, a nod, a blink, a facial. So, so that's all playing into the AI. Playing into it. But, but so. there's, to your knowledge, there's no AI that does this currently. But the there AI is. that does this con currently is is facial recognition, which is the closest. the closest they've got now. Mm -hmm. For instance, with the uh, Boston bombing at the uh, you know at the you know the marathon bombing. Yeah that was that that was helped solved so fast because they got the image of the older brother down to like five people so they took all the information from all the witnesses okay from all the videotapes they could grab so quickly right. they got all those imageries they fed it into their ai they, they came up with five images out of those five images were five people known to the to authorities the younger brother wasn't known to the authorities the older brother was okay so they got the they got all those authorities they come up with who has the closest scenario and there he is mm -hmm. so they came down to the one person they needed to kind of look for right and all of a sudden because they did that and because they announced that now you have this scare and this chase because now you're down to that one person right now how many millions of people do we have to know in order to come down to one image okay so we're not far away 
So someone has an interesting question in, in, the, in the chat of this. It says, with sure. computer-generated AI, could this not be altered given that it is computer-generated? I mean, th th I, maybe, I don't know if that question is more toward the idea of the fraud, of being able to alter it to some extent. Um, you know, because it, some it, people put, as someone had put in the chat earlier about people putting things up on social media and people grabbing information or images or something there's like a lot that. Of, there's a and lot then of they, they would create this false narrative yeah. in it's not the without its AI it's not, thing. <laughs> it's not without its dangers. It's not That's without it. Not without human, yeah. human frailty or human human evil, if you will, of of uh, doing things to defraud or to to um, you know uh, fake everything, if you will. It's not without that danger. I'm not going to say that that is impossible. I don't. I don't know for a fact. Sure. Not being the scientist or the or the AI person, I don't know that for a fact. But I do know that what we have right now, um, there's certain ways of going about it. It's control of the equipment. It's control of the of the regulations involved. It's control of this. Does a medium want to be controlled by anybody? Hell no, we don't. You know, we don't. We want to be free to think. The the thing that I see that that can't be faked is the connection between the spirit, the medium, and the client or the sitter, the the, the recipient. Those to to alter those in the middle of a reading, I think, is going to be quite difficult if if it's set up in such a way to catch the lies, to catch the to catch the falsehoods. And I'm not just saying, it, again, it comes down to what we understand as mediumship and we're becoming more and more understandable of what how it works. It's not just words. It's, it's everything we are. We sit as an instrument to be played completely. Not just my words or what I'm thinking. It's, it's my whole body, bodily reaction. It's my all my senses. It's my proprioception. It's my introspection everything's at work if the medium is allowing themselves to be the instrument for spirit then that's a purity that doesn't get altered very easily by the equipment that's reading it right. now where the falsehood comes in is after it's read it is the equipment twisting it mm, or right. changing it okay and i understand that question yeah. and you know the answer the answer is that that comes down to the the improvements upon things with trust in things as we go forward. Mm -hmm. But right now, the exciting part about it for me is that mediums that don't know how to draw or or, if, or don't have, um, can't seem to get that aptitude. I think every medium can learn to draw a face. That's, that's, that, that'll come in time. You can learn to do it. Okay. But to really learn, uh, mediumship will take some unfoldment and understanding of ourselves. Sure. The more we learn because of this and because of the AI, the, the more we force the evidence to be exacting, mm -hmm. the more we kind of thin out the herd to the real deal. And those who are fraudulent, those who are faking it, are going to be a lot more far and few between. Sure. Because they're going to be they're going to be seen as fraud. They're going to be seen as the fake or untrained. And the more that people are trained, then you'll know who the people are that are credible and you'll know who the ones that aren't. Yes. And today we still don't know that. So yeah. I know you you said there's some other advancements in science beyond these, this kind of testing you've been involved with mm -hmm. that seems to be building <laughs> in a certain direction. What are what are some of the other advancements? I, I think I, I think we've talked about a few of them, and that is that I think that the advancements in in really recreating um, a whole experience of of being with your loved ones, or um, AI has got the intelligence to go a lot faster, a lot quicker, uh, put things together, and maybe even formulate that in in the in the future. Maybe things can be even constructed, or that that uh, that holographic image is an instantly there. Um, within your short period of time of a reading or whatever. And I think as far as our work goes, that's going to be quite incredible. Okay. Now, what does that do for us 
as a society or as a, a greater the, for the greater good, if you will. First off, it shows you the brilliance of that world of intelligence, that spirit world. Um, it shows you the reason to kind of begin to become more morally bound or or ethically bound to your life. It 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 enhances our uh, not only our wanting, in my opinion, but our necessity to become more real and more honest with each other. Mm -hmm. It it small it smalls up the world a little bit more. We already ha live in a very small world. You know, we know what's going on over overseas right now. We just flick on the TV and look at any station out of a you know so, so many hundreds of stations or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. We are instantly in contact with somebody we can turn on the phone and and you know m go on meet me and and talk to somebody in england or somebody in japan very easily in two seconds flat all these things are already there we keep talking about the future of a ai it's here it's yeah. very present very relevant and very much involved in everything we do right now yeah. as that improves think about I think about back when my son was young and he had those video games, like you were talking, like the, the virtual video games mm -hmm. and how animated they were, you know, how they go like this. And now they're, they're becoming more and more smooth, more and more real, more and more like, you know, the, the rotoscoping of it, the animation of it mm -hmm. is so purely fine. Why? Because AI is fixing it, not because some technician has to sit there all day long pushing it all together that still happens but it it's thousands of times quicker than it used to be so that so the smoothness of the video is more real okay how does that change us it puts it puts an onus of necessity upon us to look at each other and say okay what's as we move forward with intelligence we also see ourselves a lot clearer and we see our own nature a lot clearer and it demands of us to be better people it demands us of us to be more inclusive it demands of us to love one another mm -hmm. because anything less than that just isn't going to work we right. will kill each other it doesn't take machines to do it so joe we don't have to have monster machines come in and kill us we'll do it to ourselves i know there's some other advancements that we wanted to talk about and i think one of them was uh the soul phone that gary swart swart yeah. yeah if you could talk to people talk about that real briefly well i i i'm not i'm not that familiar with the mechanics of it but i mean either these things were trying to be invented for a long time even even you know alexander bell was trying to make a phone that talked to the other side you know where we had this frequencies correct and those in the ancient times that's what that's what it was all about the frequency and we often wonder as mediums am i in the right frequency am i in the right energy have yes. i changed my you know in my altered state is that where i can see clearly well, if we can calculate that and come to a position where we can actually hear spirit talk, we we see a lot of these TV shows and stuff with the, you know the voice phenomena phenomena and that type of thing. Okay, and uh, you know we're out there testing ghosts in houses with spirit founders and things like that. Expensive equipment these days. Sure, uh, sure. But imagine if AI could bring us to a point where it could find that frequency. And we could not only sit with a client, but the client doesn't that wouldn't need us anymore. We might even out ourselves completely. A little bit of a self checkout situation. That's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Self oh, serve. Yeah. Look, look, look what's happened to the post. Download the app onto your phone or other device. Look what's happened to the postal service because you've got something that came up on our first computers that said you've got mail. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah, we kind of displace the old ways to kind of embrace the new ones, and people are afraid of change, and I understand that. And there's something nice about sitting with someone else 
and having the spiritual experience of our loved ones. And wherever two or more you are, there I am. You know, there's the, the greater good, the greater God, the greater understanding. I don't think we're replacing that and isolating ourselves. I don't think we're replacing the emotions involved with two people coming together to see the beauty of the other world. Okay. I think that continues. But I think this, these AI pieces of equipment going forward may be enhancements and they may be flash in the pans. They, 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 they go fast so by so fast, they're, they're, they're unnecessary because we're already on to the next piece of equipment. We're already on to the next understanding, you see. Yeah. Um, when I first started doing spirit art, it was, you know, drawing paper and some, and some pastels, you know, and maybe a, a few pencils and some erasers, a lot of erasers, you know, just in case spirit made a mistake. Anyway, the, you know, I would have that. But then I went on to drawing with televisions on a stage with, a, with an iPad mm -hmm. and drawing on the iPad. And it's all spread out to the imagery. That's all new. No one's ever done that before. And then now um, it's moving into a new stage. And as I get older and, you know, my time here may be gone, my excitement is for the students and the younger people that there is new things coming that imagine being able to do a reading and then go to your printer and hand them the picture of mom that's a detailed wonderful drawing not some fast scribble by joe shield you know but something that actually an image and say this is the person i was talking to it's it's imagine the healing or the faith that comes from that an understanding that there is a continuity of life that this person this medium could not have known my mom yet she's talked about her and then she handed me a picture of her yeah um that whole effort pushes us forward in a way of saying if there's another world which now we have our own acceptable truth of evidence of then I want to know that more. I'm going to understand that they, they have something more to say to us. Imagine if we could get real advice from those who have gone before us right. and live this life. Well, I would hope that the sacred connection would never be lost because it, you know, I can see how AI would take it more into a secular vision of uh, and version of events rather than, than the sacred context. So I would, wouldn't want that to be lost. I don't I, think, yeah. I think, I think the mystery of our own spiritual involvement remains. Um, it, it's just too big a universe. <laughs> um, but the sensitivities of, of loving others and missing others because they're gone and having a comfort that we begin to treat life not as something to throw away, not as something to damage, not as something to disrespect, but we begin to see life as this temporary stay for a hundred years or so in a way that we can um, really, really do something good, learn something and move on. And we know where we're going. So even my talk at church last week was about okay you're all future ghosts okay and now that you are and you're in that place whatever that may be to you that heaven you're sitting on a cloud with a cherub whatever the heck you're doing okay after you're gone what life did you want to have lived you know what would you have wanted to do differently how would you have moved forward had you known this was it and what do you want to show, have show up in a reading? <laughs> <laughs> and somebody goes and has some, well, right. a consult with a medium. <laughs> what right. uh, what right. do you want to have show it up there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially and, if it gets hologrammed around everyone. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you know, if you have insight, it, it helps us to live this life better because we have insight into who we who we wanted to be and the choices we made that kept us away from it. And we didn't do what we would really wanted to do that, that, you know, um, you know, that old saying from, uh, I think it was a Tom Rush song that said, growing old is replacing hope with regrets. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So we don't want to grow old necessarily. We will take the physical aging and the physical de demise, but we want to be held anew in our new life. Mm -hmm. We want to live that well saying, okay, I lived that life well, and now I'm on to my next. And I can, you know, if I want to communicate to that, to this world, I now have new AI means of, of communicating. And uh, I know we don't have much time left. Is there, um, are there any other things uh, about the advancements uh, in science relating to mediumship that, that you've been involved with or know about? Uh, really, I'm trying to think um, what else I've been involved in. I think, I think the, the involvement of actually testing mediums to see if they have the ability and to see what level of ability they're at is going to improve as well. So in other words, um, as we come into a time where we were talking uh, a while back, just a while back, a little while ago, about, um, you know, uh, the regulations of things, you know, like licensing this medium or certifying or, you know, um, that that's already coming about. Okay. But what's the beauty of all that is if, if you, if you see the improvement you need to make, so it's, it's almost like a calculable area of, of achievement where it can be taught and you're at this level and you're at that level and we we can calculate it because it's being seen very clearly mm -hmm. in an ai form sure that you're at this level now the other things that are happening are for instance i think you knew about the um the, the, the experiment with yale recently which is still kind of moving on okay an experiment uh, that we just did about how how communication takes place and um, the, the proof of the afterlife. We're still trying to do that. A lot of people, including some billionaires, have put a lot of money into research to figure out what if we keep living. OK, maybe it's that maybe it's that thirst for, you know, I, I never want to die. Maybe that's what it is. But the Yale project is to understand how someone with an eclectic mind like myself or yourself who is a sensitive, who has uh, contact with grief and maybe the horrors of life uh, every day. How do we keep from just giving up on life or, or just going out and shooting ourselves because there's too much pain in the world and we're in, we're in contact with it every day of the week. We feel it and hear it and see it from our clients all the time. How is it that we keep ourselves together? Are we just insensitive or are are we how do we well we have meditation we have prayer we have an understanding of the other the other world we have hope for the future we have the, these are the things that overwhelm the grief that we are constantly bombarded with yeah okay and the reason for the yale study is really for people who are struggling with other mental illnesses or other maladies like schizophrenia and paranoid schizophrenia so that these if they can find out how we work yeah then they can give them some non um pharmaceutical ways of dealing with it in other words natural ways of calming themselves down natural ways of keeping themselves steady in mind and body and their own health instead of having to medicate them or over medicate them or zombie them out because the so so the people that have different maladies and it's it's spread in every family in the in the world i mean there are mental illnesses of all kinds imagine being able to not just not just zombie everybody out to where you want them but be able to give people choice by by methods that we're doing and using and so we should be open to experimentation because, yeah, I, I suppose to the greatest society was still kind of weird. I get it. But I'm going to take that word away and say, we're kind of special. We offer something very, very unique and very, very uh, healing in what we do. And therefore, if it's healing to the person who's lost a loved one, 
it also can be healing to those who are struggling in other ways physically and mentally in life mm -hmm. you know i've known people i've had friends of mine who have taught meditation to who were all of a sudden paralyzed mm -hmm. well they're paralyzed from the chest down they'll never walk again they'll never move again they'll never be able to do a lot of things again right but their frustration their anger all the emotions they're going through uh all their self-destructive mindsets that that come along with disasters or accidents like that how can they be tenored to to see to kind of get away from all the pain and into what the value of who they are still is mm -hmm. because they're still valuable people yes. mediums can offer a lot to society we aren't doing that at this point except to a certain group of people who are willing to come and have a reading. Right. And there has to be that agreement yeah. with, of energy within them. Absolutely. But in the future, and the way I've been teaching my students is, you've got to be ready to be part and parcel and important to society. Because we have an opportunity to be the answer to a lot of people's issues and problems. And not just, we're not playing psychiatrist to psychologist. What we're, sh what we're doing is leading by example that there's hope, that there's another, that there's a life beyond this life, that, that the spirit is telling us we could have done differently, we could live differently, we could live more heightenedly, more, more excitingly, more well, more calmly, whatever the case may be. We no longer have to live because someone else told us we had to do that. Right. As spiritualists, we're the religion of difference. How are we the religion of difference? We're not telling you what to do. We're not telling you you have to do this or you're going to HG double hockey sticks. You're going to burn somewhere. You're going to, you're going to suffer forever. You're, you're going to be shunned out. That's not who we are. What, who we are is try to take personal responsibility for your own well-being, future, and next life. And if you do that, and we, and these are some of the tools we use. So we live by examples, show them in those examples, and teach them the example so they can become more spiritually evolved. Right. There is such an element of spiritual counseling to what we do as mediums, especially spiritualist mediums. Yes. And yes. I'm, I'm glad you're making that distinction for people today because that mm -hmm. is, a, you know, a medium versus a spiritualist medium. Yes. Uh, very different understandings. It's a different, uh, it's a different understanding and a different, uh, a different effort involved. And that's not to recruit a new spiritualist. That's not the necessity here. Right. Okay. Love to have you. You know, being a pastor of a church, love to have you fill the fill the benches, you know. But the fact of the matter is, is that that's not the game, the aim of the game here. The aim, the aim of what we do as authentic mediums and spiritualist mediums is we'd like to have we'd like to offer you the peace and the spiritual experiences that we've had in our life that keep keep us moving, even in the face of a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that there's beauty even in that there is absolutely so that's that's what it is i mean thank you for expressing that so well joe really appreciate you sharing about your science you know being uh willing to be a guinea pig <laughs> for the science experiments i i did see a, a question someone's asking i think they want to sign up and be a guinea pig too and so they're wondering who they can reach out to for that sort of thing I think if you I think if you get involved with the uh, if if you go and become a member, it's free to, to become a member of a Forever Family Foundation. They have a whole list of things, and they constantly are kind of the first ones to understand who's doing what research and what right. what university is doing what, and you can jump in with that. You know, they'll um, just let them know you want to be you want to be involved, and I think that's one probably the easiest way to go. There's other there's other ways to go, but. Um, Keep your eyes open to research that comes out or, you know, a request for research. A lot of times we're sought out, you know, because they know who we are. Okay. Um, so um, I can't necessarily help with that unless, you, unless you're, you're known somehow. Um, but they, they seek out the people they know, you know, are already at a place where they know they're real or whatever. And then and they may pick out people who aren't. 
as well. For all I know, they have to have the the placebo, if you will. You know, they have to have that. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Well, thank you so much yeah. for that show today, Joe. We really appreciate okay. you sharing about your experiences. It's a, a fascinating to topic that is definitely going to evolve, especially yes, in the next couple of years. Uh, there'll be some more advancements I would to watch science them. and to mediumship. It, yeah, especially the especially the drawing for the mediums, like just talking and having the drawing come forward. Imagine being able to test yourself. Right. And see how see how close you get. You know, I often do that with a pencil, but imagine that ha having AI do that for you. And then you can kind of, you know, kind of constantly improve, which is really awesome. Very awesome. It's always about improvement. Uh, even after decades of being a medium, I still am, you know, working on improving constantly. I think there, it's an ever growing process that we're in and developing as mediums as we become more yeah. and more aware of pure spirit. Yeah, well, you have kids, and imagine yeah. what they'll see someday, you know? Exactly. I remember sitting with my grandmother, who was 106, and asking her about her life and about when the, when the television was invented or when mm -hmm. the first radio came, from, you know? And to hear the, the wonderment of those things, and it was never thought of, like, what, a car? Are you kidding me? Something with an engine is going to, you know? amazing you know that's that's that, that that's bad that's going to be that's going to be evil. <laughs> this is just change and yeah. one thing about change is it constantly changes so Absolutely. no no problem beautiful uh, thank you so much and thank you everyone for tuning in we'll have another great show for you next week on wednesday it's with willa uh 10 a.m same time same place all right everyone bye-bye <laughs> thank you